Hi, this is Dr. Don Bonner with Personalized Wellness. Uh, today I want to continue this uh, talk that I've been doing on uh, macronutrients. And basically what I want to do is I want to gear these talks to insulin resistance and why I do the things I do as far as my diet program uh, here at the clinic. The last time you know, I talked briefly about the different macronutrients being carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Today I want to talk about two of those macronutrients, carbohydrates and fats, because those are the primary uh, macronutrients that I manipulate with the diet program here at the clinic. Now don't get me wrong, protein is incredibly important. We'll, we'll spend a video or two talking about protein and the importance of the amount of protein that you take in in your diet. But what I want to talk about today is just about carbohydrates and fat. And what I want you to think about is that your body has energy requirements. So when you take in food, the purpose of taking that food in is to provide energy for your body. So when we talk about energy in your body, we, we talk about the mitochondria, which are the basically the energy producing portion of every cell in your body. So these mitochondria can use carbohydrates for, for an energy source, they can use fat for an energy source, they can also use protein, but for this discussion today we're just going to talk about carbohydrates and fat. So when you take in carbohydrates and fat into your diet, if you have both in your diet, your body will always preferentially use the carbohydrates as an energy source at the mitochondrial level as opposed to, to fats. What your body does, it, it uses the carbohydrates. There's a series of chemical reactions that take place that essentially cut off the ability to, of fats to enter the mitochondria to be used as an energy source. So that fat is then taken and stored in your fat cells. And we have an abundant supply of storage for those fat cells. The problem comes in with insulin resistance, and, and we'll talk about that later, in the sense that what happens is your fat cells become overstuffed. So they hypertrophy, they get bigger, then they get bigger, and eventually they get to where they just won't accept any more fat. And when that happens, they start leaking fat into the system, so your triglycerides begin to rise, and you become highly inflamed at that point. So the storage process that takes place, essentially the way you need to look at it is there's a, when you take in carbohydrates, there's a very finite amount of storage for carbohydrates. We can store carbohydrates as glycogen in your liver and in your muscle cells, but it's a very, very small amount. So when you take in both carbohydrates and fats, you're going to burn the carbohydrates as much as you can in all your cells of your body. What's left over goes to the, to the liver. The liver stores that as glycogen. And what's left over from that, after the glycogen stores are full, is turned back into fat. It's called de novo lipogenesis. That fat is then sent out to your fat cells. So if this is the storage for carbohydrates, you have to think of as this is the storage for fat. Much larger capacity to store fat than to store glucose. So what happens when you take both of these in, carbohydrates and fat, it's a big, it's, it's essentially a recipe for putting on weight and getting fatter. Because you're not going to utilize, you're not going to utilize the fat that you take in as an energy source. You're going to store it. You know, it's a highly evolved system that we have and it's a protective system that we have. So that fat is going to go to, to the storage. The carbohydrates, again, are going to be used as an energy source in the mitochondria. And then what's left over goes to, glyc to glycogen. What's left over from there is turned into fat and sent back 
into your fat cells. What we're going to talk about on the next video are these fat cells themselves. We used to think that fat cells were just a basically an inert storage capacity, but now we know that these fat cells are an, are an endocrine organ. Fat is an endocrine organ of itself. And the problem is when these fat cells hypertrophy and get big to a point where they can't take anymore, that's when the problems set in. Because then your liver, which is trying to get rid of all this fat, can't send it to the fat cells anymore. So your liver starts depositing fat in other areas. That's visceral fat, fat goes in your muscles, it goes into your organs. That's when you really start to get into trouble. The liver has to store fat, you get fatty liver, and then it takes a lot of insulin to get more of the carbohydrates into the, to the liver because the liver doesn't want any more at that point. Okay, so carbohydrates and fat. If you take both in at the same time, just remember, you are going to use the carbohydrates, you are going to store the fat. So when you have, you know, something that's got flour, sugar, and oils, that's a, that is a recipe for storing fat. So think of a Krispy Kreme donut. It would be the perfect thing to get you, to get you fat. It's got both carbohydrates and fat. So you're going to, you're going to store all that fat. So we're going to work around this in the next few talks. We're going to talk about what you can do to, uh, to change these things as far as your ratios of how much carbohydrates you take in and what kind of carbohydrates you take in. Uh, just a side note, I'm, I'm sorry, I know my face is scraped up. Uh, Jiu-jitsu, a little mat burn, so I uh, apologize. And uh, thanks for watching the video. Hit the subscribe button down below. We're going to have some really good videos coming out to explain insulin resistance and why we do the things that we do here in the clinic as far as diet and nutrition. I think you're really going to like it. Thank you.